like the new frame. Thanks for logging on to the website, www.chicagosatisfemaledj.com. Welcome to the episodes. Episodes from The Element with your host, me, Sundance. And today, you can't even handle it. I got a DJ that's a producer, that's a Grammy-nominated producer, and he's a chosen few DJ. Yes! Let me go get him. Okay, thanks for logging on to the website, www.chicagosightisfemaledj. Welcome to the episodes, episodes from The Element, which hosts me, Sundance. Yeah. And today... We in here. I have Terry mm. Hunter. Mm. Grammy-nominated Terry Hunter. Say it again. Chosen few Terry Hunter. Say it again. All-star Terry Hunter. Say it again. DJ, producer, remixer. Mm. Pimp. Bad. Yes, he is. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Are we in here. I know. I'm just saying. And I didn't have to chase you down. It's some people in this city I had to chase. Well, you know, we go way back. We don't do the phony. You know, we, okay. we keep it real. Okay. Sundance won't Sundance get. Okay. That's okay. How it is. I want to jump right in because I'm very excited okay. to talk about you, to talk to you about your career. Yes. Amazing career. Thank you. What drove Terry Hunter? to be a DJ mm. and then your transition to producing or was it just right. kind of organic um yeah I think it was organic like in the beginning for me my my father was a DJ mm -hmm. and he wasn't a DJ like we do we mix records on beat mm -hmm. and all that he owned a tavern on the west side of Chicago back in the day and um, he used to just play records it's called the family lounge family den we was a big music family, and my cousin, which I'm named after, named Terry, mm -hmm. he was into the music. Okay. So one day, I heard him come home with the, I believe it was a mixtape from Frank and Knuckles. Uh -huh. And I'm like, yo, these are all the records that we be playing at the crib, but they sound like one record. Like, they was just seamlessly uh -huh. going into uh -huh. one record after another. And so my cousins used to just bring these tapes home all the time, and it was mind-boggling to me. So... Mm -hmm. From then, how I really caught the bug was my cousin had to babysit me. We went to Belmont Rocks, which is on the north side, right off the lake. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget Frankie Knuckles was playing. And I'm Sundance 11. Really? You know, it was outside. It was during the day. 11 years old. And he wanted to go to hear Frankie. Okay. So he's like, well, like, man, man, let's go. We, it's outside. It's 3, 4 o'clock. We can go. Mm-hmm. And I'm just seeing people scream Frankie's name. Here again, hence, he's playing all of the records that my old man played at home, that we listen to every day. Making all these records sound like one record. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how does one man have this much power mm -hmm. over all these people? Mm -hmm. That was it. It was in the summertime. My birthday's in August. I went home. My grandparents raised me, so I went home and told my grandmother. I was like, I know what I want for my birthday. She was like, what? I said, a mixer. Not knowing my ass needed a turntable, <laughs> right? The speakers and needles uh, and all that to go with it, but right. I just knew I wanted a mixer. And from that point on, I stayed in the house when she got me that mixer. My old man had two old turntables with the long stems when you used uh -huh. to put the album down uh -huh. and you had to wait for it to drop. Uh -huh. Snatch those off, cut a pencil out, put that in so I could have put the turn, you know, the record on the turntable. Uh -huh. And if people back in the day that had some of my records and knew, because you know we always used to loan records out. All my records on the B-sides or the opposite side of whatever record I played had all kind of pencil markers, like somebody just scribbled on it. But that's because I didn't know what I was doing. I just cut the pencil. That was the only thing that would fit. Mm -hmm. And the lead of the pencil uh -huh. would be there so uh -huh. it could go down smoothly. So all the records had the little uh -huh. pencil marks on them. So from there, I just started practicing, practicing, working jobs till I got money, got a turn take, two turntables, mm -hmm. and the rest is history. Were you mixing in high school? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went to Hyde Park. Shout out to okay. everybody in Hyde Park. Really? Class 88. What up? Really? Yes. Oh, go Terry. Yeah. So you've been DJing since you were 11 until now. Until now. How old are you, Terry? I am 45. You look good. Thank you, girl. Yo, y'all don't be hiring me in the streets. How did you make the transition to be a producer? 
at that time, we were all making tracks. You, you remember when we was doing parties, we were making tracks. And, you know, I had to separate myself from all the rest of the DJs because virtually we were playing the same damn records, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what can I do to make me sound different? And even if the DJ before me played, you know, Is It All Over My Face or the Gherkin record, for instance, mm -hmm. that you was just playing. Yeah, that's my favorite. You know, track. shout out to my brother Kenny Dope. We did that together. But we had to make ourselves sound totally different from the next DJ. So what I did was started pause mixing records. You know, we had the tape decks and they had the real sharp pa uh, uh -huh. pause on them. And I used to make my own edits. Mm -hmm. Playing at the parties. It went from there. Um, shout out to um, my big brother. We doing it all over again, Mike Dunn. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. Mike Dunn made me and I know he don't even remember this. He made me we might do my first track. Mm -hmm. And it was Right when sampling came out, mm -hmm. and we just made this track. We was in the basement with Marshall Jefferson, and he just sampled my name. And the track was Terry Hunter, T Terry, 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 Terry Hunter. T -t hey, yo, I used to play this track everywhere mm -hmm. I went because it was my signature track. Right. There wasn't nobody doing that back right. then. You know what I mean? So it went from there. I met a brother, shout to Kenny Jordan. He had a drum machine, and um, he had a 909 and a Poly 800. And I made my first track in his basement and released it on. Armando's label, rest in peace. That's who really got me started into production mm -hmm. was Armando. Mm -hmm. And playing it at the parties got popular and put them out. But that was the record that got me to travel overseas. I didn't want to stay local. I didn't, because it was too many people at that time in Chicago, not to name no names, but mm -hmm. they were local DJs. And I was like, no, that just DJing in Chicago is not for me. I want to go to London to wherever I can go. I want to get up outside of the city, but mm -hmm. still be present here. And I knew the way to do that was making records. Your story. So let's fast forward. Okay. You are now a chosen few DJ. That's right. Which is um, the biggest DJ group. Probably. probably in the world. Yeah. And I was going to say the nation, but yeah, you're right. The yeah. world. Is it true? That when they added you in 2006, mm -hmm. that they hadn't added anybody in 20 years? It was probably longer than that. Okay, but, let's yeah. say 30. Let's say... They had the original members and they never added anybody No, it wasn't 20, because we just had our 25th, uh, our 25th anniversary, so it wasn't 30. So yeah, about 20 years. 20. About 20 years. And it was an honor. And and I would never, I never forget Wayne called me... Um, and he wanted me to become a, a chosen few DJs. And this is when the picnic was still going on um, behind the museum. Mm -hmm. And I had to go overseas mm -hmm. that day. And so they wanted to do a big introduction thing and I couldn't do it. And I'm like, oh man. So whatever the reason, um, now that I, hold on, now that I think about that, they were supposed to give me some kind of a award or a trophy for joining and being the first member to join in 20 something years. Yeah. And I still ain't got it. Okay. That was supposed to happen. So. so uh, fellas, are you using my elements? I'm using that. I'm blasting <laughs> my blasting chosen white? few brothers out <laughs> right now. Where's my trophy at? Because everybody else got theirs. Where's mine? See, I'm glad. What, you said what, that. what are the requirements to be a chosen few DJ? What Wayne saw in me was like minded and what he saw in himself and Alan and, and Tony and Jesse, uh, for being DJs, you know. And I represented the city, the mm -hmm. city to him, you know, well, and the production and, and, and all of that. And mm -hmm. You know, we was brothers. We was always mm -hmm. close friends. That's I why know. I think it was just a natural mm -hmm. situation for me to just slip right in and make it happen. Mm -hmm. So here I am. How did you get a Grammy nod with Jennifer Hudson? Hmm. You know, I was I was watching that night only for you. I only watched just for you, and I'm like Terry gonna get this. I told my husband Terry gonna win. Terry gonna win. Yeah. I'm still proud of you. No, me too. I'm I mean, we Grammy nominated. You know, shout out to Maurice Joshua for grabbing that Grammy. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was it was a good thing. Like, how it happened was, it was funny. We had always been going back and forth, um, working on records, me and Wayne. And, you know, we was always doing stuff. I was always doing stuff for R. Kelly remixes-wise. And I'm like, man, I'm tired of these remixes. That's, I want to produce a record for him. Mm -hmm. So one day, Wayne came over. was like, look, I'm going to the studio with Rob. Rob wants something. He's like, play me some stuff. So we went in the studio in the basement. I was just playing tracks. He was like, yo, that one right there. So I'm like, cool. So I'm like, here we go again. I'm like, he gonna like the record and then nothing's never gonna happen. Wayne called me back that night and was like, yo, he got the hook. He got the hook. I'm like, uh-oh, we getting somewhere. Uh -oh. Okay. So he sent the hook. We went in, went to the studio, talked to Rob. Rob went back and forth. 
Next thing you know, a couple days later, Wayne sent me the whole record. Rob had really? cut the whole record. Done the whole record. Because originally, what people don't know, that the record was supposed to come out on R. Kelly's album. That was done for him. Mm -hmm. That wasn't for Jennifer. And so, apparently how it went was a lot of the execs in the heads from RCA came into town and Rob was playing them. This was, I believe, the Black Panties album. Okay. And they played It's Your World. Mm -hmm. And then one of the a rs was like, yo, man, this is the direction that mm -hmm. we're going with Jennifer. Like, can mm -hmm. we let Jennifer hit this record? And then, you know, Rob was like, man, that's up to Wayne. And then Wayne called me. I'm like, I don't care who I go to. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's representing house music. It's, it, yeah. it's the city where we do it. If it's a big artist like that, it's a plus. Sent it to Clive. Clive Davis loved the record. Like, really? Come on, man. Like, Clive, like, Clive loved the record. I'm like, stop. Mm -hmm. Sent it to Jennifer. Jennifer loved it. We went to New York two months later, cut the record in New York. The rest is history. Did you do some work with Aretha Franklin? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, from that, <laughs> we getting good we now. We getting good. So, from that, again, um, by Clive. Liking what we did with It's Your World, me and Wayne. And, you know, Wayne being the senior VP of RCA, they was working on the Aretha record. And so what they were doing at the time, it was, see, the, the whole album was covers, basically. Okay. And so Clive wanted me to redo uh, The Supremes, You Keep Me Hanging On, and Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive. Mm -hmm. Now, those records are incredibly hard records to even touch, one, because it was so big, and two, what are you going to do with them? Like, right. what are you going to do with I Will Survive? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with the Supremes you keep me hanging on? And so I was up for the challenge. And so originally we was doing Alicia Keys mm -hmm. uh, record. We did a whole bunch of records and we ended up landing those two on her album. And the same year that we got nominated for the Grammy, Aretha won mm -hmm. uh, album of the year for the uh, NAACP awards. How proud were you? Um, listen, like my aunt, right? Mm -hmm. I grew up on Aretha. She mm -hmm. idolized Aretha. So mm -hmm. for me, just to produce or reproduce a record for her, knowing right. as a child how much my aunt mm -hmm. loved her, mm -hmm. and it's Aretha Franklin, like, quit playing with yourself. It was like, yo, we get a Grammy nomination mm -hmm. and then win the NAACP award. Mm -hmm. get. And I got not one, but two songs on it. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. I'm proud of you too. Thank you. I'm proud of you. We represent the city. When Terry is not recording for major artists like mm -hmm. Aretha Franklin, Alicia Keys, R. Kelly, Jennifer Hudson, when he's not flying, mm -hmm. when he's not in his studio, mm -hmm. who do you listen to? I'm a hip hop head. Shut up! A hip hop head, like I, like ooh, like yeah. tribe, like Rock okay. Kim, like KRS One, like mm -hmm. Mob Deep, uh -huh. like NWA. Really? Like, I'm a, I'm a hip hop head. Like I was in the hip hop really before. Really? House music. Oh yeah. Have you oh, ever yeah. made some hip hop tracks? Oh absolutely. You know who's one of my face first big artists? Tifa. Tifa. Yes, Tifa. I know about yes. my sister. Shout out to my sis T. What up? Yes. Yeah, Tifa and also her now husband Twan Gabs. Mm -hmm. So that led to me doing stuff with Rhyme Fest and you know, just I'm a hip hop head. Really? I'm a hip hop head, yes. Do you listen to trap? You can't wrap your mind. I like it. You know what it is? I like it too, but the problem of it is for me. This is the and I said just I remember it like it was yesterday when I was a kid, like I did not want to sound like my parents. Like, yeah. what is this yeah. noise? Yes. And what is this? You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. I was like, then I find myself doing it. And it's like, I have a different look on it because mm -hmm. I do music. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yo, your price this way too high. You need to cut it. Yeah. Cut it, cut it. That's some garbage. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it works in the club. It, do. it works. It works. It works. And then, you know what? It's the kids' time. Yeah, they like it. Yeah, and you know, salute. Uh huh. But it's just it's too nursery rhyme for me. It's they don't put no thought in it. Everybody taking the same kick drum, the same yeah. hi hat pattern, the same D tune eight oh eight. Do do do. Like, come on, man, get creative with it. So that's why I like the nineties okay. hip hop in the late eighties yeah. because it was samples and you yeah. was flipping stuff and 
you know, shout out to them. They doing their thing. Panda, panda, panda. I love Panda. Terry, you a hater. <laughs> I might be on the low. You, you a hater. You a low key. You mad because you didn't make Panda. <laughs> That's what it is. Because they get checks. Oh, they get checks off So, that. the chosen few picnic is yes. coming up. And that's why coming I wanted up. to save this for last. Yes. It is coming up this um, July 4th. Yes. And I heard you guys got two days. Yeah, two days. July 2nd and July 3rd. So, this is the first time we're doing two days. Why? Well, Who came up with that? Well, I think the people did. I think that's what the people wanted. That's the response that we were getting from the people out there every year said, oh, man, you need to make it longer. Because if you look at it, a lot of the big festivals that go on around the world, they're doing multiple days. Yes, yeah, like Lollapalooza. Yeah, Lollapalooza. You know, they got this. I'm not going to name any names and give them no shine, but it's a few mm -hmm. festivals that go on in Chicago mm -hmm. that they're doing two yeah. days. Yeah. And so it's like, for me, we're going to be wore out. But I, I think it's needed in our city because we represent real not just house music, but real music. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We're not on this EDM and no, no disrespect mm -hmm. to it, but we're bringing the essence from the beginning and current into now. So mm -hmm. I think it's great that people show their support, you know, 40,000 strong, who would have ever thought? Really? Yeah, it's, it's bananas. And so this year is a twist, like we're encouraging people to come out on, on Sunday because Monday is the four. We got Roy Yes on, on Terry, on shut up. We got Cheryl Lynn on Sunday. We got, come on. Like, we Can you plan? bring uh, Womack and Womack? Baby, I'm scared of you. You know what? She said it right here. So Please. Please. Guess they might be coming they... next year. Who? Jeff. I hate to do it. What up, Jeff? This is Sundance, what I've been telling you about. You know, I love Jeff. I know. It's like, he's just the dopest DJ he in is. the world. In the it. world, he he took something, he mastered it, and nobody can do it like mm -hmm. it. Jeff got swag with it. He kills it, and the crazy part about it, that's why people like Jeff. We had in mind for the picnic, and always wanted to incorporate that. And us doing the two days mm -hmm. gives us gives us this platform to do it because Jeff play house too now. Don't mm -hmm. get it twisted. He play old school stuff. He play hip hop. He played current, he played house, soulful, all that. So that's what we wanted to do on a Sunday to kind of concentrate more on the gospel, the steppers, the funk, the soul. Also, Just, it's going to be a variety. It's going to be a variety on Sunday. Totally oh. different. Saturday is going to remain the same. Okay. We're going to do it how we always doing it. But Sunday is just going to, we're going to focus more on a whole other side of Chicago. So, so a few DJs, baby. So I have to, I, I, and I told you before, I told Wayne and I told Mike, I've never been to the big Listen, you got to book your gig at night and come no, during the day. No, no, the chosen few ain't paying not one bill in my household. Listen, you're right. So if I'm booked right. around the 4th of July. You got to go do it. But I'm saying if your gig is at night, okay. you got all day. People come in and lined up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I saw First the, DJ go yeah. on at 8. So you ain't got no excuse. You ain't DJing nowhere at no 8 o'clock in the morning, no 9 o'clock in the morning, or no 10 o'clock in the morning. You're right, Terry. So that's all I'm saying. You're right. That's it. You still get your money. Thank you. I that's just it. need a little bit. That's it. That's, that's I just it. Need no, a you, bit. you get it all. <laughs> because you know why? I'm playing Panda. Huh. <laughs> Man, I got to play it, Terry. I got to get that mad. money. I ain't mad at you. Okay, any anything that you want to shout out, how people can reach you, if you're looking for artists, Lose I'm looking for time. artists. I'm looking for engineers. I'm looking for musicians. Anybody that's dope, mm -hmm. get at me. DJTerryHunter.com. Hit me on Twitter at DJTerryHunter. Instagram. All that. I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. And I'm looking just for just dopeness. And he answers his phone. Yes, for you. I at least with Sundance. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Thank love you so you. very much. I love you, too. I want to call. So who do we need to talk to? I need to drive around with You need to call Honda. Okay. Honda, this is a Honda Element. So that's hence the title, Episodes from the Element. Y'all make sure y'all check my girl Sunday. Thank this you. show is ridiculous. <laughs> I told her. I I done watched them all. Mm -hmm. So now I'm honored to be on here. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you, that's Terry. It. Thank you, And baby. thanks for logging on to the website, www.chicagositisfemaledj.com. Download the app available on Android or your iPhone, Chicago Citus Female DJ. Episodes from the Element with Sundance. And the iconic Terry Hunter. Yes, ladies, we got some nice looking. Wait, you see a man, right? <laughs>